super exciting stream today. Bum, bum, bum. Not gaming, just painting. Um, let's make sure that I am on Twitch. channel. I'm live. Testing. Cool. All right, so I am recording this one. Surprise, surprise. I know, I never record them. But I am doing a how-to video on how to paint calico critters. Because I said I would like a month ago. <clears throat> So I'm doing custom calico critters. Um, these were hedgehogs. I have removed the hedgehog fuzz and am now left. Whoa! Oh no, my webcam. I've like jury rigged it. It does not like to be up where it's at. Going to be a bumpy ride. Um, so, it's not going to be a very professional video. Yeah. But so, basically, you remove the fuzz and then it has like a little black helmet. Then you pop off the helmet and you're left like with little two holes. So, I've put clay in the holes and I've made ears and attached ears. And then I'm doing two things. I'm doing a skunk and a possum. So I've got, I've made the tail for the possum and attached it. And that's good to go. And I've made the skunk tail and headpiece that's going to cover these holes. They are uh, felted. So this looks like taxidermy. So that's the skunk tail and that's the skunk headpiece. They'll be glued on after painting. So that's why they're just kind of taxidermied there. So what you're gonna need, you're gonna need your acrylic paints. Um, there's videos out there on how to do it dry brush style. Um, I do mine kind of like a wet wash and layering. So I've got my paints all set up. I have a super awesome, amazing, just layered paint thing. I've got water. And I've got a buttload of paintbrushes. I kind of just go for one I can just layer. I'll be probably start with this one. And you want a lot of paper towels. You're gonna go through a lot of paper towels. So we're gonna do the skunk first, because it's gonna be easier to darken the dark brown fur instead of lighten it. So, because as you probably saw. Instead of going with black, I'm actually going to be doing kind of like a reddish brown um, instead of black. Uh, I, I kind of want a slightly different skunk and you know, so it's not a traditional skunk stripe. I'm doing a hog nosed skunk, which is a kind of like a long furred fluffyum skunk. Okay, so. Let's get started. So wet your brush. You'll see I'll, I get covered in paint when I do this because I use myself and everything around me as kind of like a, a palette. <laughs> so you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. You just want a little bit and like I said it's it's kind of a wet wash type paint you're just going to kind of dab it into the fur and dip it in the water again and just you can see it I'm sorry there's construction near me you, you can see it just kind of spreads out into the fur and you're going to take the paper towel 
and kind of just dab the excess paint out. You're gonna to wanna to do that so that way you still keep the fuzz. You're just basically staining it with acrylic paint. And kind of just keep doing this all throughout. You just want to make sure your paint's super wet. You just kind of dab it and it just bleeds through the, the felting. Um, it's easier to do if you can, if you get like the newer types of calico critters or the ones that can be dismantled into pieces, which I can show you. I have a video up on my YouTube that has um, how to like pop apart baby calico critters, how to take their heads off and switch them. Um, you can do that with a lot of the other calico critters. Okay. Because it would be easier to dab like underneath, but I'm not going to be too picky if his underarm fuzz is matted because he's actually thinning a bit like here on his felting and I've got like glue I got these secondhand from eBay I was like if I'm gonna be practicing doing like additions I already know what I would do different for the ears but this is my first time doing a full body alteration but yeah so you like basically wipe away the paint and just keep reapplying and then eventually it just starts staining a darker color. As you can see, much darker. And that is how you basically color via paint. It takes a lot of patience, but it's kind of worth it in the long run. That's how I've done, and you get to keep the fuzz. Like you can see, even after it dries, you'll still get to keep your felt. It won't look all matted. Um, and then you grab, I have a completed one I can show you. So this is Ripper. Um, it's not the best example, but he was chewed up by a dog or something. So where you see the red, he doesn't have any matting. He doesn't have any felt, but you can see where I've, like he has a full body repaint because he was super badly scarred up. But you can see sort of his felting still all there, even though I've had to do a repaint on him because he was super faded. And the majority of his fuzz is like gone. Even in areas where he still has some, it's super thin. He's lost almost all of his felt. Um, that's why I kind of did a horror movie type repaint on him. Um, he had like none of the darker around his eyes. He had none of his striping. Um, I didn't like the type of tail they had, so I redid a tail that's more meerkat-like instead of just the um, pipe cleaner. Here's another one. This one has a better example of uh, keeping the felt fuzz. You can see, like, if you go super heavy with the paint, you can get, like, a scale type texture because you'll cover up the felt. Or you can keep the fuzz. It's super soft. And you can do, like, fading really well with it just by dabbing out the paint. Um, this one has an experimental tail. Um, it's a, I have glow in the dark dinosaur skeletons. So I took the skeleton tail and then I glued brushed out yarn to it. So I've got my forest or spring elemental. Um, I did an eye replacement and this one didn't come with a tail. So there's that. bunny doesn't switch so yeah let's try doing a lighter color now let's try with the possum 
I don't know if I've tried lightning. This will be my first time attempting it. Let's go white. <sighs> Let's try it, shall we? This might be a little bit harder to keep the fuzz. But I figured since possums were gray, I wouldn't mind if some of the darker showed through. Yeah, it's gonna take lots of coats. All right. But it's getting lighter. Okay. Let's try adding gray. See what the gray does. And gray helps lighten it. Again, like I said, it'd be so much easier if I could take these guys apart. And um, the tail's felted wool. I've not painted on felted wool yet. So that is also going to be an experiment, but let's get the fur stain first, shall we? And basically you can just keep reapplying until as long as the fur stays wet. And kind of keep dabbing more paint in there. like how the gray looked so I'll have to do white all the way oh, this may have been a lost cause and I should have refilted the whole thing but I don't have the patience for that I'm because <laughs> unfilting and refilting I would have to be able to take apart the whole thing and I don't think I want to do that I may just have to deal with less fluffy because possums have coarse hair to begin with so I might just have to deal with matty hair which I guess is okay like the skunk I'm gonna want to keep soft which I'll be able to do with the darker but I think I'll I'll survive having a little bit of matting here and there on the possum because possums aren't exactly known for their exceptional grooming skills. Let's get the fuzz wet up here. One of the key things to keeping it from getting all matted is the water. I have found. I'm just kind of like working the paint in. Work the paint in and then brush or squeege the water out. Coming along a little bit. It's gonna be hard around the joints with this one, especially. But yeah, it's getting soft. Cool. It'll just it'll actually make it look kind of more possumy. Okay, let's see if I can figure out how to paint this while we're recording here. 
should probably pull up my picture I was using for reference too, but that would just be smart. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't get out my pink paint, so that's fine. Okay, so this pretty much just paints exactly like the felting on the critter itself, except for I can be a little bit more heavy-handed with it. Make sure I'm still on the camera. Okay, cool. And that'll give me a good base gray to judge the rest of this on. So that's what I want his little body to look like. When I'm done. See, like I said, it's going to take its gonna take a few days of painting because you're gonna want this to dry completely and then you're gonna do more layers and more layers until you get it the color you want so I won't do it all in this video but just kind of hoping you see the gist of how it's done just kind of get it wet apply more paint Spread it around, dab it out, <laughs> dab the water out, and you leave behind most of the paint. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty decent start on the lightning as fur. You can see it's a pretty decent difference between normal, lightened. Now right, let's go back to the dark one. Let's go back to Mr. Skunk. Um, clean that out. Let's do a little bit more. Ooh, didn't wash it too well. All right, let's go back. Mr. Skunk. I've debated for whether I've wanted to like just dip the critter in water and paint on it. Um, I've done that when I've been able to separate the pieces and it was okay, but because I can't separate these guys, I don't want water getting inside him. So that's why I just kind of have to go area by area. And it also allows you for, um, if you were wanting to do like tiger stripes or more of a controlled, like if I was actually going to paint the skunk stripes on him, if he was completely wet, uh, kind of like, I'll do it on the head. So if it was completely wet, the paint kind of just spreads to everywhere that's wet. Um, if I was wanting to do a more controlled paint job, if all the felt was wet, I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, let's get rid of the ears, little ears. I'm gonna regret doing that because I'm gonna get it all over my hands. Just a little bit to get the water out. See, so like I said, he'll go through a lot of paper towels. Yeah. I'll paint it. I should wipe those off. I'll just paint his ears last. Do, 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 do. Still a lot of water. 
It's a messy way to go about doing it. But once the acrylic dries, unlike with um, if you're going to use Copics or permanent markers or other things like that, um, once the acrylic dries, it's not going to rub off on your hands and stuff or the dresses or things like that. Um, I've heard people complain that after they've um, words, words are difficult. I've heard people complain after they've um, done their modifications with the other methods, like with markers and stuff like that, that it'll bleed through the clothing or it'll like fade or stuff like that. Um, I've not had any issues with the acrylics because it's, it's a plastic. When acrylic paint dries, it's a plastic. Um, and that's why it's, it has a tendency and why a lot of people don't like using it is because kind of like how I showed you on the cat, if you get too much of it, it creates scales. That's because it, it's a plastic. Um, but if you use it in such a small amount and it gets worked into the fur, you can't really tell. It's so minuscule, but it can be used in either or fashion of super fine, leaving just using it as a stain or super thick and using it as a scale. Um, so that's how you can kind of like leave it as um, detailing for in fur or noses or mouths or using it as a stain going through the fur. So yeah. Um, let me just get kind of the back of his body somewhat painted. And we'll see how he looks like with his tail on. Look some brown in. Let me boom end it. You can see lines where some kid probably drew on him where his felt isn't even. I love getting, like I love second chance toys. Like, I, I don't know. I love, I love getting toys from eBay or Goodwill or stuff like that and being able to repurpose them, especially stuff like this. And I love figuring out how to make them better. Um, this lot that I got had these two hedgehogs which obviously, as you can see, like as I'm painting it, there's a lot of uneven spots in its fur. Um, it had a bunny that, I'll let that dry for a second. It has a bunny that's got a lot of pink, um, which I'm going to be doing a repaint on and going to be adding antlers. So it's going to be a jackalope at the end which I might do a full video on that. I don't know, I might just do just like pictures, picture by picture. Um, Cause I'm kind of just painting and chatting for this one. Instead of doing, I'll do picture by picture for the possum. Cause I'm just kind of rushing through getting this painted so I can show the tail on it in the headpiece. And I know I haven't dabbed for a while, and I should. Wipe the eye off. And if you get paint on the eyes, it just it just wipes off like it just did. It's no biggie. Same with the whiskers. It just, well, it's wet. It'll just wipe off. And if it dries, it just scrapes off. Um, armpits. I know it tickles. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Um, okay, you are a wet, wet skunk. Do not set it in the white paint. <laughs> All right, time to tap. Pad you out. I have the ears glued on just with some super glue. Not the cleanest glue job. But 
it did the job. <laughs> I was like, I could probably find a better way to do it, but the super glue, it attached them. They're not coming off. Not unless I like really snapped them. Um, so yeah, so the paints that I'm using for my skunk are just pavement and raw umber. <laughs> I had to find their names on here. Um, yeah, that's how I'm getting just the really nice dark, dark brown fur. I don't like straight black on the calico critters because it makes, I use a lot of black backdrops and it makes it hard to see them. So I like, that's, I don't know if I explained that's why I'm using brown in my skunk instead of black. Because I figured the really dark brown would be easier to see. And so we'll also compare brown versus my dark. You can see just that one wash darkened it up a lot. And so the one wash will also lighten it up a lot. So I'm excited to see. Let's continue kind of dabbing because you're super, you're still super wet. And then you can see it's like the holes, it did cover them up a little bit, but if you're wanting to use the moles, sorry, not the moles, the hedgehogs, when you remove the helmet, you will have the two holes on the head. So you'll need to do something to cover them up. Um, you can use hats or um, like with uh, the skunk, I am, I have a piece of felt and then I'm felted in um, some wool that is going to stick like this. So that'll be the top of the skunk and it'll go around like that and it'll just glue on like this. So that's not bad. I'm liking that brown. I might just stop there. I really like that dark. Okay, and then the tail is going to go right up here to the back of the neck. And it's going to glue down to about here. And this is going, I'm going to paint this the same dark brown. So it'll be like Oh, I did really good matching the two colors. Um, so it'll be like that. Where's your headpiece? So the skunk will be like this. So that, I'm trying not to get it in the paint. There's my skunk. That's how you do a full modification. Pretty snazzy, right? I don't want to leave that on too long because he's still super wet. So he just needs to air dry now. And I'll check him for any spots where the paint's still pretty thick, like right here. Probably add water. Thin out that paint. Not that that matters, because the hair is going to be right there, but it's more of a principle of the thing. I don't like, I do want to keep his fuzz somewhat fuzzy. I guess I don't really need to worry about his back, but his belly does, and I don't know, the side of his legs kind of thick in paint. I am not painted at all. Bottom of the feet. I'll probably add paw prints. Or paw prints, like little toe beans and stuff to the paws, like with a thick, thick pink paint when I get it. Also going to be doing a pink nose because it is like a hog nose skunk. Uh, it's going to have a pink nose um, and little paw pads, little paw toe beans. Might do toe beans on the paws too. Um, so he needs to dry, then I'll paint his ears and probably do the pink, pink accents. So yeah, that's, 
you get messy. Um, that's how you do painting. Hope you learned something. I'll get this posted up soonish. All right.